So let's go onwards and start creating some ports. What we want to do is log a message, as we mentioned earlier. What we would want then is pretty much two input ports. One that is simply a void input, taking anything, saying log the message now. Whenever we get a signal to that port, we log. And then another port that takes a string called message. And that's where the user either directly inputs a message or passes in a message elsewhere. What we'll do is we'll actually add enums for this in order to know which ports do we need to activate. And and an enum enum is pretty much like a list, Mm -hmm. similar to an array. Pretty much. So you just have a bunch of values mapped to names. It's helpers and nothing else. This makes it a bit clearer. You could, if you wanted to, simply hard code the values, but this is much clearer and much easier to diagnose later on. And let's start typing correctly if we can do that. (laughs) (laughs) There we go. It's okay, it's late. (laughs) Yeah. And let's also make this consistent. And what we then need to do is we need to define these in get configuration so that when the flow system calls get configuration we modify config here to return the actual node the input ports and output ports that we want and we do this by actually providing a static array of both input port configurations and all output ports so think of this as uh, it says get config this is almost like typing in the framework of how it exists within the base framework of the node does that make sense? We had git config and process event, mm-hmm. and now you're wrapping this in and showing what is the input port yeah. and how is it structured. Truly. Exactly, yeah. So we start with saying, okay, we want a void port, just saying log. So we'll just do input port config underscore void just here. And simply say, okay, it should be called log, uh, description, logs the message to the console. Then we want the message port, which is input port config. And this is a template, which we can just pass in a string to and say message and the text that we want to log. And these are kind of like tool tips that will pop up when you hover over it, correct? Exactly. The description is just help. If the designer needs any help finding out, okay, what does this input do, then they got it. And at the end, we also had to add a null terminator right here. Uh, const output port config to create output ports as well in a very, very similar fashion. Let's do this quickly. Uh, output port. There we have it here. Underscore void. Say on log. Sent after logging to console. And again, a null terminator. And that's pretty much the array that we'll be giving to config later on as well. But keep in mind that we haven't sent anything back. Whenever the flow system calls this currently, nothing happens. So what we need to do is say config.p input ports, I believe. Let's see if this actually reacts. Oh, my bad. Let's just do this. And we have the p input ports and simply set that to, sorry, just input ports. And then config.p output ports equals output ports. And then we actually update and provide an array that will not disappear. This is important because these arrays have to be persistent, thus being static. Uh, and they're passed to the flow system, allowing it to find out, okay, these are the nodes we need. And a description for the node could be log a message. And I'm not sure if we need a category. Let's see, actually. So we have a category, which is by default debug. Maybe we should change that. Why is the category important? What exactly does that do? Uh, The category is a sort of filtering. By default, the user sees uh, a set amount of filters, meaning released flow nodes, stable flow nodes, and possibly debug flow nodes. I can't remember correctly. But... There are a few flow nodes they don't see by default. Maybe, uh, let's see what flags we have. 
underscore. Yeah, there is one called obsolete, and I believe this is not hidden by default. Oh, sorry, not available by default. I think that you're correct. The obsolete is something that you can tag up top and then it exposes exactly what it is. Exactly. So you can still use this if you manually in the flow graph editor say, okay, I want the obsolete nodes, but by default, it will not appear. Let's be explicit and say that this is an approved node, approved for designer use, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Then let's try compiling this again. Remember, we don't actually do anything when process event is called, say when an input is triggered, but let's see what happens. <clears throat> we, we could probably also show them in the flow graph what I was talking about with the obsolete. I believe it's up in... Yeah, in view, right? No? Yes, components. Exactly. Obsolete, so that's exactly what it was. Yeah. So by default, an obsolete node would not be shown. Mm -hmm. And then if we simply say my node log, and here we go. Bingo. Log, message, and on log. So we could technically trigger that, but it won't do anything for now. Almost so there. Almost. Yeah. So let's keep going. What we want to do is check which event did we just process. And then simply say, uh, which events do we have available? Yeah. We want the activate event. The activate event is sent exactly as it says here, when one or more input ports have been activated. What we'll do is we'll check, okay, is this the event we wanted? Then this is for clarity. And then simply check, was the flow, flow node input activated? And we do this with the is port active function. Uh, I believe this comes from one of the helpers or the iFlow node interface. Oh yeah, it's actually global, yeah. What we'll do is We'll pass in the activation info and also say, okay, whoops, we want the log input. And here we go. Then, whenever the log input is activated, we will enter this block. Seeing that there's nothing actually going on, nothing will happen, but we'll add that just now. So what we want to do is call crylog always uh, with the string from message, which we can get by calling get port string. And this, in. this right here with crylog always, that is the same uh, logging function that prints out to the console for everything. Exactly. There are a few variations. So if we quickly check that, there is crylog, there is crylog always. Uh, there is, I believe, cry fatal error, for example, which will fail completely. Mm -hmm. Cry warning. Uh, there are a bunch of various examples of these. Uh, warnings and errors will be triggered and logged at almost all times. Always will always be logged. But for example, cry log might not always be shown. It depends on the user setting using the log underscore verbosity. C oh, I was just about to ask about the verbosity. Yes. Yeah. So that's it. And then when someone actually triggers this port, we will print whatever message is in here. And that's it for that part. Okay. But then we also want to uh, activate an output port. How was it we did that? Let's see. So we have is port active. And if we scroll down, we have activate output. That's exactly what we want. We want to activate an output with the activation info, uh, the port index, meaning int the outputs on log, as we specified it here and here, and then the value. In this case, we actually don't have a value, do we? No, we don't pass nothing. Then I believe you need to pass in a dumb structure that contains nothing. Let's see what it was called. The activate port, we can go to that very quickly. Yeah. T flow node input data is what it takes. What we'll do is we'll create T flow node. Um, output value. And simply send that out. Keep in mind that we could be sending a boolean here. We couldn't be sending a message out. 
but we are choosing to send out nothing. So we're simply creating an, an empty instance of input data and then sending it out. And that will trigger the output port. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. And then let's try compiling this, see if we did anything wrong. There's not much to it. It's merely providing the inputs and outputs whenever the flow system asks for it. And then also processing the events and doing whatever we want during that time. For example, we could hijack one of the flow graphs here, create a new instance of, let's see here, my node log. What message do we want to print? Just say uh, CryEngine. CryEngine, perfect. And then we can also hijack the input key node here. So now, whenever we press T, we activate the log input. Let's see if this works. We jump into the game with Control G or press play up here and press T. CryEngine was logged to the console. And this is all triggered by the code here. So it worked as intended. Exactly. So when we started the engine, get configuration was called. Everything was set up as we intended here with the input and output ports, also description. And in process event, when See here, our log, log input port was triggered. We get the activation event. We check, was it this input? Yes, yes it was. Uh, we log the message right here and also output the value to this. What we could do is even do something extra, like... We could uh, use another node where we can exactly. log my node again. Exactly, we can copy this, paste it, and... Just log again. Very original. <laughs> Both of them are quite original. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm very proud of this. Let's see here. Here we yeah. go. CryEngine again. Perfect. And that's it. All you need to do to create a very simple flow node. Not well, much to it. Yeah, so we're already done. That's uh, ba the basic workflow for a flow node, how mm -hmm. you register it. Keep in mind that it is pretty much the same structure also with Game SDK. So if you're working in Game SDK, mm -hmm. it'll be very, very similar in your pretty much safe on both ends. Exactly. So I think that wraps up the tutorial or the Q&A session. Oh, yeah. And uh, we can move on to something else. Yeah, awesome.